Hey guys, welcome back. It's Rishi once again, and today we're focusing on the topic of inserting a letter. This specific topic focuses on questions where the same letter must fit into both sets of brackets and to complete the word in front of the brackets and to begin the word after the brackets. So this question will require you to pick up a letter. Now, you should be able to insert your letter at the end of the first word and at the beginning of the second word whilst still making sense. And this should also make sense when applied to the second pair of words. Now, the words that you complete with your selected letter must all be real words. A question mark will indicate where the letter should be provided. So I hope that introduction was clear. Let's now take a look at this example that we have here. Now, with a question like this, you will be tested on the following. A broad knowledge of English vocabulary and definitions. Practice in problem solving techniques. Recognizing the most suitable sounding solution and working logically and in order. Now, if we look at the core skills that this is testing, it's both processing the information on the page. So what is it telling me? And then identifying the correct solution. So what do I need to do? Now, you won't be expected to have all the answers or to know all the words. But what makes a good student is if you are able to apply your techniques to new scenarios. So you have to be practicing your vocabulary ahead of time, at least, to be able to work through these questions quickly. They look simple, but they can also be complicated, with exams throwing in uncommon words, which leads to you wasting time and getting confused. So a good way of working them out is to quickly list out all the letters that will work for the first word and then strike out any that won't work for the second. And you should only be left with one letter, which is your answer. So with that in mind, let's go ahead and jump into this right away. So for example, number one, let's take the first letter, which is E. And let's assign this to all of the words given to us. So we've got care, easy, fire, and ever. They are all real words. Brilliant. So here's a quick technique tip. One method I use in class to teach spelling, and you may want to try this with your child or in a family group, is to ensure that they know that letters like N, R, T, D, and S are common ends to words. But if there is a consonant as a penultimate letter, it's more likely that the final letter is E or Y. So having a phonic blends and knowledge of letter frequency also provides your child with a more targeted list of, of possible letters to answer a question with, rather than merely going through from A to Z for each one. So with that in mind, as you can see here, the correct answer is E. So by inserting E, you can make the four words which are care, easy, fire, and ever. Okay, let's move on into question two, and this is our second example here. So again, we've got four words here and we need to find one letter that ends the first word and starts the second word. So again, just concentrate on one of the words which seems easier to work with. So again, we'll do the same thing as we did in the first question where we have the first letter. And again, as you can see, it doesn't really work because these are not real words. So we'll try the second. So we've got bark, we've got kilts. These are all real words so far. And again, we have rink and kind. And that there is our answer, which is K. So by inserting K, you can make the four words bark, kilt, rink, and kind. Now in some papers, the technique when you have multiple choice answers is the same as the previous question that I've gone through. So pick out a combination of letters which seems less common and work from there. Okay, with that in mind, let's jump into question number one. 
Let's go ahead and choose the correct missing letter. So what I've done is I've removed the multiple choice options just to make it a little bit more challenging for you. Again, we need to find a word that makes sense. So for question one, we could select the letter W, which then would give us brew, want, blow, and wish. And those are the four words. Okay, question two, it starts with min. Now, again, if we take a look at our vocabulary here, what do we have? We have the word mint, and that works with time, want, and taupe, or even the letter D. And that would give us mind, dime, wand, and dope. So again, we were really close to positioning the letter T, but it didn't work for the final word. So we went with the letter D. Okay, question three. What do we have here? We can have the letter P perhaps, which can say trap, pair, prep and pour. So again, prep is our only issue here. So let's think of other four letter words that we can work with. What about the letter Y? So we know P is incorrect. So let's go with the letter Y and we can say tray, year, pray and your. And there we are, Y it is. Okay, question number four. Again, a four letter word which starts with T. Well, we can go with the letter M here, which is team, mill, film and malt. So I hope you're understanding the different techniques on how to work out this question. A lot of this is reliant upon your vocabulary as well as the common sense here. So try to mix and match letters to see which works best. And let's attempt the next one, which is question five. So again, we need a four letter word which starts with pen. Well, we can go with the letter D because we have penned, days, slid, and duff. And again, if any of these words do not make sense to yourself, please go ahead and search them up, write the synonyms and antonyms and use them in sentences. I hope these first five questions were useful. Let's now go into the next section. And this is where I'm going to pause the video. And this is where I want you to pause the video, attempt these questions, and then press play when you're ready to go. Okay, let's start with question number six then. And let's be systematic about this now. There are several reasonable options if you don't see it straight away. And given the possible answers that you could think of, there's plenty of pitfalls. So what I want you to do, I want you to start with one of the words or one of the letters. We're gonna go with H-O-L. And given that last time we started with a specific word, Let's try the alternative approach. So now we've gone with H-O-L. Let's pick a letter from this. Let's go with L. And we're going to put it in each of the places to see what we get. The only downside to this method is that you may have to go through all four words before you find an answer. On the plus side, it can be quick if you pick the right letter to start with. And remember, don't feel obliged to start with the first word, which is H-O-L. You can start with roar, lee, or even rip. It's entirely up to you. As long as you're on top of things and are crossing out the letters you've tried, it's irrelevant which you go for. Okay, so what letter have we come up with? Starting with H-O-L, we can start with the letter E. So we'll have whole, but then we know E-roar is not a word, so we cross that out. Let's then go for the letter D, for hold. So again, we can have hold, draw, that works really well, lead and drip. And that there is our answer. So again, there's two different ways. You can specifically go for a letter, such as maybe the last letter, which is L, or you can go for the entire word, which is whole, and then find the final letter. 
which again in this case was D. Okay, let's go for question seven here. We're going to do the same thing here, and we'll start off by the word F-A-I, fay. So it's a four-letter word, and we now need to think what can be the last letter. Okay, let's think about the letter L, fail. Then we have late. Then we have sill and lamp. So that also works well. And let's go for number eight. And again, for number eight, I'm going to go for the third word now. And I'm also going to link this to number seven and put an L here for fail and long. And if I put the L for the beginning, that's foul and limp. And that works really well as well. Beautiful. Okay, let's go for question number nine. So again, let's go for the letter U for muse. So for number nine, let's go for the letter E for muse. But again, it doesn't really work with the remaining words. So we can cross that out. Let's go with the letter T next for must. And we have thin, wilt, and trim. That works really well. And we can give that as an answer. And then for the final one, question 10 here. Again, we have the same beginning as number nine, M-U-S. And then for the final one, question 10. I think there's been an error here. So let's cross this out and let's do another one. And I'm going to go for H-U-M-L-O-T-I-N-S-S-I-N. And for the final one, T-O-P. I don't know if many of you have already worked this out, but let's take a look. And the answer is the letter S. And that's going to be for hums, slot, sins, and stop. And again, remember, as with most kinds of questions in the 11 plus verbal reasoning exam, the best way to get to grips with them is through practicing. So let's now move over to the final five set of questions here. And again, I am going to allow you to pause the video, attempt these questions, and then press play when you're ready to go. Alrighty, so question 11. So let's focus on the variation on the style of questions that we've been given. And you remember, you just have to be more careful in not going for the more obvious answer without checking. Now the technique when you have multiple choice answers is the same as the previous questions that I've given, but you're not gonna have any choices here. So let's now think about a combination of letters which seems less common and let's work from there. Okay, so for question 11, let's start off with the first word. And again, we can go for the letter T for goat. But then does that match with the next one, tefai? Hmm, tefai, does that ring a bell? What about the letter D for defy? You've got goad, defy, fled, and dull. That's helped us out, isn't it? That's helped us out, hasn't it? So again, we know for question 11, we have the letter D. Okay, question 12, we got pin. So could it be pint? at all but does tave make sense well, we know lost makes sense but it doesn't do it for the second words so we can cross that out what about the letter s we've got pins save loss and sure amazing that works out so i hope you're seeing how i'm going through these questions finding a letter checking to see if it works and then moving on okay question 13 what can we have then for B-R-A. Could we go for the letter N at all? To so bran, nest, warn, and nose. Yes, we can. Okay, question 14. Lou. What about the letter T here? Loot, toll, fort, and telt. Hmm. Any ideas? I don't think that works, does it? So let's cross that out. And let's go for a new word, M, which is loom, mole, form, and melt. Marvellous. And like I mentioned before, if any of these questions don't make sense, feel free to note these down, find the definitions, and apply them in your sentences. 
This will not only help you with your spellings, but also your vocabulary. Alrighty, let's move on to the final one. We've got ban. So think of all the four letter words which have ban at the beginning. What about the letter G? We've got bang, gave, flag, and gain. And there we are. And that there brings us to the end of our video. That was a short introduction to inserting a letter for verbal reasoning. Don't forget that in your head, you should place the letters given after the specific word and see if they create words. The first two may not make sense, but as long as you're remembering and understanding the different type of words, you should be good to go. If it isn't uh, enough of an abbreviation, it may not be a normal word in English. So discount it and then move on to a new word. You've done really well coming this far. Don't forget to comment and share this video if you found it useful. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video. So have a great day and I'll see you again.